In today's video, I'm gonna show you a technique I use all the time to displace geometry in Cinema 4D. Don't miss this one. Hey everybody, it's Nick here from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now today's video is all about a technique I used in a recent Instagram post. Now if you're not following us on Instagram, we post Cinema 4D renders, some behind the scenes, and if you're not following us, I'm actually gonna put a link down in the description. We'd love to see you over on our Instagram page. Now today I'm gonna to show you how I did a specific technique where we displace geometry. Now we have a similar tutorial here on Grayscale Gorilla called Sub Poly Displacement from quite a few years ago. And I'm gonna show you not only how to do that, but also a new technique that I've been using uh, with some more recent tools that I think is a little bit better. So let's head on in to Cinema 4D and see what we're making. So here we are in Cinema 4D and this was the image where people started asking how did I get this look? in Cinema 4D. And so I figured I'd open up the scene file, show you guys exactly how I made this. Um, but, but it also reminded me of an old tutorial that we did uh, from 2010 uh, on Grayscale Gorilla called Sub Poly Displacement. And you can see it's actually a really similar effect. And if you haven't seen this tutorial, I'll make sure to link it up down below and you can go learn how to use Sub Poly Displacement. Now in many ways, this will get you the look. But I wanted to show you today what I think is a better way to approach this look now that we have some new tools since 2010. So let's go ahead and jump into a new scene file and let me show you what the heck we're talking about. So I'm gonna use a plane in this case just to kind of show you what's going on. And I wanna show you how I did the sub poly displacement tutorial very quickly just so we could see the difference between these two techniques. So I'm gonna make a new material and I'm gonna open up the material editor and in displacement, you could see there's a whole channel just for displacement. I could turn it on. I could come into our texture and add some noise. Now I'm gonna turn this up just so we could see it in the viewport. Um, and when I hit render, look, it is now displacing this geometry, right? So now I could crank up the height and I could get more displacement. Okay, but you can see it's not very smooth. There's not, the, there's not a ton of geometry in this plane. So how do we fix that? Well. What sub poly displacement does is it adds more geometry on the fly when it renders so that these textures are much smoother. So check that out, much better, right? But the problem, you could see it already. If I don't render, if I'm just looking in the viewport, I'm not seeing what this looks like in my scene. And this could be problematic if it's a, a serious part of your design, you don't wanna not see it in your viewport and wait for a render every time you do it. Now this is rendering fast, but imagine you have all your lights and everything in here. So this is where this other technique that I wanna show you today comes in handy. Now again, go learn more about sub poly displacement because it is good for some things, especially if you have a ton of geometry in your scene. But for most of us, I want you to start with this first. This is in the deformer tab here. It's a displacer deformer. And all you do with this is put it as a child of your object. And then from there, it's very similar to uh, your displacement tag uh, tab in your material. Instead of uh, in the material though, you come into your shading tab. And again, you could just pick noise. It, but now look, check this out. It's distorting it in the viewport. And as I turn up my height, I'm seeing it without having to hit render. And this is very important if you're trying to get a look going um, and getting some sort of style with these, with these textures. That's not just some fine detail. This is a huge part of your design. You want to be able to see it in the viewport. And that's why I recommend the displacer. Now, what do you do now when you need more geometry? Well, we don't have a sub poly displacement button over here. Instead, you're gonna have to rely on your original geometry, which means you have to you know, crank up the amount of geometry that's going on in here. Uh, and the other lever you could pull to kind of smooth this stuff out is your subdivision surface. So in this case, I have my plane selected. I can go to subdivision surface. I can hold down alt or option on my keyboard and it's gonna make it a parent of that object and look now i got all my smooth geometry back now this is almost identical to this other way we did it but now it's in the viewport which means we can come into our displacer and mess around with this stuff but now you're seeing the other drawback of using the displacer instead of sub poly displacement and that is you know low frame rate frankly um 
this is this is gonna really bog your system down if you're doing this with a ton of polygons. Now, right now, we don't have a lot of polygons, so it, it's okay. We're, we're doing okay, but if you crank it up and you're starting to get slow, you may wanna look back into the sub-poly displacement way of doing things. Um, now, before I jump back into the scene file, uh, where I made that that original render, I wanted to show you just a few more things I want you to experiment with. One is your smoothing. So in other words, if you have less geometry, I'm gonna go back to 20, and if you don't have enough smoothing on your subdivision surface, it actually won't smooth it out. So you can actually turn these numbers up and get smoother peaks and valleys and just round out these, um, these edges. Um, and the other thing is, is of course, in your shading under noise, you could put an object or a, you could put an image in here, but even in the noise tab, you should be experimenting with these types of noises and what they look like and how different they could look. And again, you need more geometry to really get these different uh, styles. But this is essentially how I ha uh, made that, that, um, that wavy geometry look. So let's go back into the original scene file and see what we have stacked up. For this torus, we have exactly what we made in the last scene, but it's on a torus instead of a plane. We have a displacer here. I go into my noise. I have the Luca noise type on a torus that has um, a lot of ring segments, but not really a ton of pipe segments. And that's what gives it these kind of wide chunks, these kind of narrow but wide slivers in uh, almost like chocolate slivers. Um, and then of course we have the subdivision surface on top of that. I added a lot more uh, division in our renderer when I did the final render to really smooth it out. And of course um, our displacer is doing all the heavy work. If I turn that off, I just get uh, a boring old <laughs> Taurus. So that's what that is. And for those of you, um, that wonder about you know how the whole thing was made. Uh, these textures here were made with top coat, a lot of layered reflections on top of each other to get this uh, texture. The metal texture was made with a similar technique to um, this geometry, but I also added a polygon reduction and I threw it all in an atom array, and that's what gives us these these kind of like wire form um, geometry. Okay, so if you're interested in that, check out Atom Array. We have other tutorials on that uh, made with top coat. Oh, and of course, uh, all lit up with HDR Studio Rig, which is again, another one of our plugins that we sell here at Grayscale Gorilla to speed up your workflow, instantly add HDRs. Um, in fact, top coat and HDR Studio Rig are in almost every one of my physical uh, and standard renderers. Um, uh, renders lately, so check those out. So that is uh, that is it. If you have any more questions about this render, you know, don't forget to throw it in the comments below. And hey, if you follow along and make something cool um, with with this technique, uh, we'd love to see it. Throw it in the comments as well. So uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching everybody. And hey, keep an eye out for an upcoming tutorial from us at Grayscale Gorilla, all about what happens after we hit render in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna break down layer by layer all the glows and tweaks that I do to my renders in Photoshop to really help them stand out. You're gonna learn some techniques that I use in almost every render, whether it's in After Effects, Photoshop, or whatever compositing program you learn to really help your renders stand out. So keep an eye out for that video. In fact, it might already be up. And to be sure, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you see all of our videos as they come out. And with that, I just wanted to thank you one more time for joining us here, and I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye, everybody. Anyone know how to solve this? Getting close. Oh, look, look there I go, I did it. Awesome.